first let me get Santa and his reindeer out of the way, so to speak. In fact, it was one of the last things I noticed about the photo and, to my mind, one of the least remarkable. Not because I don't admire the skill of its creator, but because the photo's appeal to me vastly exceeds this fanciful addition. The photographer is a dab hand at Photoshop, and I'll provide a link to his Flickr site so you can see for yourself. It's not hard to imagine that the thick snow blanketing the scene likely made the first and most dramatic impression on me. The accumulations on the ground and cars and clinging exquisitely to the branches of the trees. I think for it to do that, the snow must have been slightly wet and the weather very calm. As you study the photo more closely, details emerge. Cars parked further down the street. What appear to be bottles and other items in the windows of distant buildings. A vase with dried flowers or rushes. It's curious that the light coming from virtually all the windows in the photograph is white especially considering it's Christmas. Does it suggest institutional lighting or cultural tradition? We do have the Christmas lights at the bottom of the photo, but even they appear white, although a pastel shade might have eluded the camera. Is it perhaps a tinted grayscale image? I don't think so, because the photographer mentions the sky's wonderful color in his comments. The furthest buildings at the foot of the hill are grand, imposing, but not without grace, their dignity heightened by the snowy calm. All but one dark, closed for Christmas if businesses or perhaps their owners away on holiday somewhere warm, missing all this stunning beauty. On the brow of the hill above them, street lamps. Uh, my understanding is that the rays coming off that one street lamp, 18 by my count, relate to the number of blades in the iris of the lens and suggest good quality equipment. In his description, the photographer writes, On Christmas night, I took a picture of the view from our balcony. It snowed all day, and just around 6 p.m., the sky turned a wonderful color. What color would you call it? Mauve? Lending its light to or deriving it from the scene below? An enriching, though melancholy shade. Closer to the bottom of the photo, on the side of the road, sunken bungalows in what looks to be a sort of gated setup, perhaps backing onto a river or ravine, mysterious to my mind and suggesting cloistered lives. Across the road, a stairwell that seems uncharacteristically well lit, even considering the street lamps and snow, and makes me wonder whether we're looking at one of those high dynamic range composites that combine two or more photos at different exposure settings. That might also explain the remarkable detail elsewhere in the photo. In the garden immediately below us, a demure bloom of Christmas lights covered in snow and ice and beyond them an artwork, a stylized flower or windmill that looks surprisingly comfortable amid the snow and ice. I was born in midwinter in Montreal, a city no stranger to snow, and lived there until I was five. It's possible this photo evokes something of that time, and of course anyone who lives in a northern clime knows the magic of a snowfall like the one pictured here and how it can transform and enchant a landscape. 
The alchemy that this image works in me is intriguing and poignant. It's interesting to speculate, but I think in the end, the interplay of image and memory and imagination must remain tangled and mysterious.